Oops, really? I hit the wrong button. Is it recording? It's recording. Let's try this again. Testing, testing, one, two, three. As soon as I come outside and turn this camera on this morning, somebody started a leaf blower. You guys remember the story of the Hatfields and McCoys? Well, we found their RV park. It may not be much of an RV park, but it's definitely a place to lay our head. And that guy's truck's loud for the night. Let me just tell you, the McCoys <laughs> saved our skin last night. Guys, I know I was saying that this isn't much of an RV park. It's just kind of a place to park for the night. But look at what's behind our camper. Check that out. A nice little flowing creek. Isn't that cool? Now, if we wouldn't have had problems to deal with last night, we never would have found this. You guys may be asking yourself, Kevin, why are you wearing a jacket? <laughs> because it's cold, that's why. Dude, really? Shut up. <laughs> There's a crow. Anyway, we showed up in this little town called Weston, West Virginia last night, or yesterday, and it ended up getting pretty cold. It was supposed to be in the low 40s. Woke up this morning, it was 38 degrees, hence the jacket. Anyway, right now it's 46 degrees, it feels pretty good. And I wanna show you guys the air data information for today's flight. Now we've got like pretty much zero wind. And look at the temperature up there in the left-hand corner, 46 degrees. The only thing that it says on air data right here is that we're, we're low on stats. Does anybody know if that means anything or if that makes a difference? Because any time that I've ever had that issue come up on air data, it's never really seemed to be a problem. I don't know, I'm probably wrong. But anyway, guys, I grew up about an hour or so north west of here yeah northwest and we always heard stories about west and west virginia when i was a kid and my grandparents and well my dad too they always threatened to send us to weston if we didn't straighten up now a lot of you guys may already know what i'm talking about but i didn't really know what they were talking about until i was in high school and then i found out that there was an insane asylum here in weston that was in operation until 1994 so when i was a kid <laughs> they were serious about that they would have sent me here That crow is going crazy over there. <laughs> I think there's more than one. Ugh. What are you guys talking about over there? <laughs> okay, I think they want me to shut up as bad as I want them to shut up. Anyway, getting back to the asylum, it was in operation from the mid 1800s or the early 1800s until 1994. And I know this isn't a history channel and I'm not a big history buff. So if you guys want to skip this part and go straight to the drone stuff, I would understand and I wouldn't get offended. That's why I put chapters in the description so you guys can skip around and find the chapters that you specifically want to watch. Because not everybody wants to hear this crap, Kevin. I don't know how good the mic's picking them up, but man, they're loud. Well, like most of the people that ended up in the Trans-Allegheny... What is it called? Well, like most of the people that ended up in this Trans-Atlantic... Or Trans... <laughs> Well, like most of the people that ended up in this Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, they had a story. Well, we have a story about how we ended up in Weston, too. As most of you guys know who have been watching our channel, you know that we're on this six-month-long camping trip to visit family. We're calling it the Family Circle Trip. And we've got this trip planned out from pretty much from beginning all the way until we get to Christie's family's, family's place in Iowa. And that's not until, shoot, I think that's after July, July 4th. So we've got everything planned out. Well, this stop here was supposed to be an 18-day layover, if you want to call it that. And we were going to park our camper at my sister's house. Well, that kind of fell through. <laughs> I can't remember exactly what I was going to say here. Well, during this three-hour drive, we saw some amazing scenic sights down the interstate. You know, we saw the mountains and we saw the trees and all that stuff. And we saw a couple of airplanes and a bunch of dead animals laying on the side of the road. Christy keeps note of all that. But whenever we got really close to where my sister's at, we come up to the stop sign and we turned right. And it, we had about, I don't know, 10 miles or so to go to get to her house down this windy road. And it was narrow, it was pretty, it was pretty, pretty uh, what do you call it, hairy? Anyway, what do you think we come up behind on this two lane road in the middle of the country? We came up behind a bicyclist. <laughs> I don't know why he was there, but he was going 16 miles an hour and we could not get around him because first of all, we were toting this huge camper, but secondly, it was a two lane road with double yellow lines and turn after turn after turn. So we followed this guy for at least five miles before we finally found a spot to where we were able to safely pass him and get around him. Well, there was a line of traffic 
that was behind us a mile long, and guess what, we were the first vehicles behind them. Well, when we finally got to her driveway, I realized, or Christy realized pretty fast, that we weren't making it down that driveway. That driveway come off the road, and it was almost an immediate 45, well, probably not 45 degree, but 43 degree angle down to the right, and then we had to kind of swerve to the left to go down a hill. There was a guy wire. It was just, a, it was, <laughs> it was not a good setup for a camper. But we knew right away that this wasn't going to work and we were going to have to find different accommodations for the next 18 days. Well, that was kind of stressful. So I called my mom. I told her what was going on, said that we were going to try to go travel towards her place because that was our next stop. And we were going to try to find a campground between my sister's house and my mom's house. So... Here we are, we found McCoy's RV park. They saved our skin. You guys hear me rambling enough. You ready to have a drone video? <laughs> I am too. So today's video, I've got Dwight, of course our DJI Mini 3. And one of the main reasons that I've got Dwight is because obstacle avoidance. There's a lot of things around here that these drones can make, come in contact with. So I think the smartest test today is gonna be with Dwight. How dark is it in that picture? I hope you can see me. Well, I'm going to tell you what today's test is about. So let me pull the comment out that we got. And whoops, wrong thing. There are crows. I hope the crows don't attack Dwight. Would you just shut up? Well, back to the drone video. A few months ago, maybe three or four months ago, we did a video and we did a spotlight test video where I used the truck as sort of the spotlight. Uh, what's the word? I sure wish I could think I could if those stupid crows would shut up. A few months ago, maybe four months ago, we did a spotlight test with Dwight here, and I used the truck as the point of interest. And what I did, what I was wanting to see was, you know how whenever you, I guess, mark the mark a vehicle as a point of interest, you can follow that point of interest for a certain distance or whatever, and then magically the drone will will change its sight picture from the vehicle section or the vehicle picture, it'll go to a pin. Now my theory behind that is, is you get so far away from the point of interest that it's looking at visually, and it changes that visual point of interest into a GPS lock type point of interest. I think that's what happens because it can only see the truck. It's a small object from so far away. Well, whenever we did that test, I was able to fly back about a thousand feet, and then that's when the pin came up or showed up. And when I came forward, I wanted to see if the pin was still locked on the truck. So I came forward with the drone and I realized that that drone that pin was probably about four or five hundred feet away from where the truck was so I was kind of disappointed in the accuracy of that but I sort of understand because I mean shoot that's a pretty small truck from a thousand feet away right well we got a comment from Infinite Success Academy and it's a pretty long comment but here in the middle of it he says next test does the range increase if you spotlighted a larger object say a house or building it's a great question I think that's a great test to try since we're here in Weston West Virginia I think we're gonna try that. So we're gonna do the first test with the truck, and then there's a huge camper right there. We're gonna pretend that that's a house, and we're gonna see if we have better luck, or we can go further. Anyway, you'll see what I'm saying whenever we get this test started. So let me get Dwight up and ready. Let me get him out of the, out of the box here, and we'll get this test going. Ain't this exciting? <laughs> This was an unplanned test because, or an unscheduled video because we weren't supposed to be here. <laughs> Let me get the controller turned on and I'll get Dwight started up here. I've been having problems with Dwight with that button. I'll click it and then click it again and nothing will happen. So I, I gotta click it like four times to get it to work. I don't know if that's a defect in the drone or if it's just a finger problem. Anyway, let's get him setting up here, in the middle of the truck where his uh, home point's gonna be. And we'll wait for this screen to come back up so we can start our screen recording. All right, we got the screen recording going, and Dwight has a perfect picture or perfect view of the back of the truck. Home point updated. Okay, so how do we do this? I don't really remember how to get to spotlight mode. Oh, yeah, dude, you just have to raise the drone up. We've got the home point updated. Let me go ahead and pinch the sticks together, and we'll get Dwight started and get him up 20 something feet so he can get his uh, home point accuracy kicked in whoops I'm a little up a little bit too high and we will uh, try to remember how to do this spotlight thing I think we want to fly off that way because that's the clearest section with no trees <laughs> all right Dwight are you ready 
I'm gonna raise you up just a little bit more and we're gonna spin around and we're gonna get the truck in, in picture here so I can do this droney shot. Wow, that was fast. Right, let's just fly straight back here and we'll pull the camera down so we can see the, the truck and we can use that as the spotlight picture. Okay, so how do you do this? You go to that little icon there. Focus track is enabled. Oh, that's his truck, that's not ours. Let me back up a little bit more. There's our truck right there. So let me hit plus on the truck. And all I'm gonna do is just fly straight back and up and do sort of like a droney. And we're gonna see how far out we can go. So right now, if in the bottom left-hand corner you can see that we are um, almost 200 feet away. And I'm raising it up just slowly but surely. But we're staying in, in focus with the truck here. I don't think I really need to go up much higher. Oh, right there's the pin. That wasn't very far. 300 and, well, it's kind of, it's kind of in between. So let me continue to go back. Now it's back to the truck. So let me continue to fly backwards. It's still locked into the truck. Last time we got 1,000 feet. So why it was going to the pin so fast, I'm not sure. And there we go. It's to the pin. If you can look at that pin, well, now it's going back to the truck. <laughs> let me just keep going backwards until it's for sure locked into the uh for sure locked into the well now it's yeah it's going back and forth that's kind of strange has anybody ever had that happen before i don't know if anybody's ever had that happen before i've never seen that on any video but we're back to the truck so we're 500 and something feet out and he's starting to get above the trees there we're 600 feet out we're still locked into the truck we're 137 feet up I may need to start, oh, there we go. I think now we're totally locked into the pin at 756 feet. So I want to come forward now and see if that pin is still locked onto the truck or not. So let's just fly forward as fast as we can. We're in normal mode and we'll see where that pin lands or where that pin is. I probably scared those crows because they've shut up since. <laughs> I don't think they like this drone very much. Well, they might. Maybe that's, maybe it's, uh, I don't know, singing them a lullaby. All right, so we're still flying forward here. We're only 450 feet away. It looks like the pin moved away from the truck. That's weird, because normally before the pin moved forward of the truck, and right now it's past the truck. Actually, it looks like it's locked in really good. Guys, it's still locked into the truck. That's cool. I can't complain about that. Hi, Dwight, can you see us down here? Actually, let me uh, hit record so I can have some video evidence of this. <laughs> All right, well, let me back up here. That was not a bad, not a bad result. Let me back up and lower because I want to get this other camper to be the, the next object of our affection here. All right, so let me back up a little bit more so we can get this camper in the picture. I need to X out of that, I guess. There's another camper here right in front of us that is kind of big. It's definitely a lot bigger than the truck was, or than the truck is. So let me go back into that spotlight mode. Whoops. All right, right there. Focus tracks enabled. I wanna drag a box along this. And now that's gonna be our object to focus. So we're back, we're 155 feet away already, so we gotta take that into account. I think we were 750 feet away, <laughs> see? I've already forgotten how far away we were. <laughs> anyway, I think it was around 750 feet. So I'm just gonna fly backwards now and start doing my little droney that I think is, that I'm good at, which I'm probably not. And uh, we're gonna see how far back we can go. Oh, he's already at the pin. So that was actually a lot less than, uh, than when he was locked into the vehicle of the spotlight mode. Let's see if it's still accurate though. Let's come forward and see how accurate this pin is. Do you guys see the hills in the background? Tell me that ain't neat. <laughs> Looks like he's locked onto the onto the camper pretty good. It's not a bad um not a bad not a bad lock. I wonder why the last time or the time well we did this twice. I wonder why both times that uh pin moved so far away from the location of where we were at. Well, I, infinite success, I think that might answer your question. Let me get Dwight landed and we'll have a quick conclusion here. But I think we got a result. All right, let's do this. I flew Dwight out about 600 feet. This is like the world's shortest Where the Roberts uh, video. So I needed to make it longer. So let's do a return to home test and see how accurate he can be landed on the back of this uh, tonneau cover 
even though it's black. He doesn't like that very much. He usually likes to have his little orange landing pad that he can recognize from above. All right, so we started the return to home flight. And let's just uh, keep our eyes on Dwight and make sure that he's gonna be as accurate as he's been for the past several, well, several months actually now. And yes, I keep saying actually again, I'm not sure why. So he's 150 feet away from us. He's pretty much right above us. And whenever he pulls his camera down, we're gonna see whether or not he's gonna be accurate. I think he's gonna be fine. Whether he lands, that's another story altogether. It looks like he's off. <laughs> Hopefully he's able to adjust himself a little bit to the right because right now, yep, there he goes. He just adjusted himself to the right and he's gonna land directly in the middle of that tonneau cover where he took off. Now remember, he took off a little bit to the left of the uh, brake light or a little left of the middle. And I think that's exactly where he's gonna land. So let's go to the GoPro and we'll watch him do his final approach. <laughs> Is that the term, final approach? All right, Dwight, good job, buddy. There you go. Like I say time and time again, that never gets old. <laughs> As always, you done me proud. All right, guys, well, I think we got an answer to our question. Infinite success, thanks for the comment, thanks for the suggestion. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Now, we're still trying to figure out our next 18 days of camp life because, like I said, we ran into that debacle. We'll keep you apprised <laughs> of any developments. As always, guys, I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. God bless.